Hey everybody, I'm Pete, and I recreated my remote control for my garage door opener. And I added a high level of security using the SparkFun cryptographic coprocessor. And so I suffer from the engineer's curse, and when I see something's broken, I think, I could probably fix that with my soldering iron and a few SparkFun parts. And then, you know, a few months later, I have something that kind of works. But uh, so with this project, I followed that urge and um, it actually turned out pretty awesome. Um, it's not often that a DIY project comes out more secure than what's commercially available. So we're gonna dive right in here. Let's take a closer look at the hardware I chose. So here we have my remote control. And for this, I actually chose the SparkFun aluminum enclosure, which is pretty burly. Um, this is probably gonna live in the back of my car and my toddler is going to be pressing the button when we need to go into the garage. So I wanted it to be really strong and handle any drops that might happen. This aluminum is really nice to work with because you can actually use sheet metal drill bits and um, just get in there to do these holes quite nicely and do panel mount stuff on the outside. I used the duck antenna uh, and then there's a UFL connector on the wireless module. We'll look at that in a sec. It's pretty nice. It can handle the occasional knock and actually rotates in all directions. Uh, these push buttons are pretty darn burly and it's nice that they're panel mounted because it takes all of the, the force that you might exert on the pressure and puts it onto the enclosure rather than like a PCB or something inside. So let's open it up and take a look at what I chose to put inside. All right, so inside of here, we have um, a 400 milliamp hour battery, little LiPo. From my calculations, I should get about 6,000 button presses on this, which should last me about 10 years, so that's pretty good. Okay, but for the fun stuff, um, right here I am using the Pro RF, and this is a SAMD-based uh, microcontroller. It has the quick connector, which is super nice, and I was able to just do a quick connection straight over to the cryptographic coprocessor, and that is how I'm actually digitally signing my message when I send the command to open my garage door. So that's pretty fun. So right here, you can see I'm using the U.FL connector, and that's making its way up to this sweet duck antenna here, panel mounted. And then I got my button here. And this is actually something I've never done before, but I used the momentary button to actually control the power to the circuit. So that way this thing is completely off unless you press that button. So when I press this guy, it actually just connected power from the battery to my circuit and I have to hold it down for three seconds while it does its whole cycle to send the message to the garage. Um, and that's a pretty nice way to keep this thing super low power and conserve battery. And I wanted to highlight that feature on the Pro RF. There's actually a couple headers here for a switch to do exactly that. And you could use a, an actual power switch to turn it on and off, but I used a momentary button for my power switch, which was pretty fun. Yeah, and then I just have some like double-sided Velcro in there to hold it all together. That's pretty much the controller. Um, let's take a look at the receiving end. All right, so on the receiving end, inside my garage, I chose to house the electronics in a box because um, a little weather protection there in the garage. I hope I don't get too many leaks. Um, and what I've got here is actually another Pro RF, and it's kind of hard to see on this angle here, but um, it's the same board that's in the transmitter there, and so they're both talking to each other, sending in, receiving messages. And for this one, I actually just chose to do a wire antenna. So you can see that's just soldered straight into the board there. You want to get that length just right, but if you do that, you can get some really good range. Um, again, I'm just doing a quick connector to the cryptographic coprocessor right there. And then in order to actually activate the button on the wall, I'm using a relay. So this is the quick relay, uh, just the single unit. And it's probably pretty overkill for pressing a button, but it was actually really nice to work with because I didn't have to solder those I2C connections. And then I've just wired out to a pretty burly connection point here that I can easily connect and disconnect at the wall mount. Yeah, so that's how this works here. Um, what's fun about this system is that these cryptographic coprocessors are adding that really high level of security. And what's actually happening is a couple handshakes. So I press this button, this guy sends a ping to my garage, this guy hears that and says, okay, somebody wants to open this garage. Um, I'm gonna create a new random token, send it to the remote, this one hears that random token, then it digitally signs the token and returns that signature. 
And so now this one just uh, heard that signature and it can actually verify that the signature is good to go. And the only place in the world that that signature could actually be created is right here at this hardware inside the cryptographic coprocessor. So that's what makes it super secure. And so using the example code from all these, from these three products, I was able to sort of copy and paste what I needed to pull this off. And um, we actually put together a full-fledged tutorial on how all this works. So if you're interested to try to upgrade your security on your garage or actually any kind of project that uses button control or wireless control, it's a great starting place for that too. So yeah, um, hit up sparkfun.com and you can see that tutorial and pull this off yourself. You can put this part in super duper fast mode. The SparkFun aluminum hard uh, sh shell case. <laughs> I'm sure we have an electric drill around here somewhere. <laughs> what do we even call this? Is this an enclosure? Just an uh, aluminum enclosure. Aluminum it's all right. It's not a good idea to use an electrical drill because you might strip out the threads on this. It is pretty soft. All right, so.